Sanctuary Story Overview In this story, you will meet Grandma who refuses to leave her old house, even though she knows that it might fall down at any moment. She has lived there her whole life, and she is willing to die there, too. Here is the story. Nothing could make Grandma move out of her house. After Grandpa died, Grandma lived alone in her big house that stood on a high hill surrounded by giant trees. Grandma was old, and she was so crippled with rheumatism she could hardly move around. But she decided to stay in her big house even though it looked as though it was ready to collapse. Your mother can't go on living in that house, Pa told Mom. That house is old. It's ready to crash down. She must come and live with us. But Ma will never leave that house, Mom said. She was born in it. She was married in it. Her seven children were born in it. Grandpa planted that oak tree in front of it when he was a young man. She'll never leave that house. I'll go up there now and see her, Pa said to Mom. I'll explain it to her. I'd like to go with you, Pa, I said. All right, he said. We live close to Grandma. If it weren't for the apple orchard that Pa had planted, we could have seen Grandma's house from our house. We lived just a quarter of a mile away. When we reached the front gate, Pa stood and looked at it. This gate is ready to fall, Pa said, as he opened it very carefully. Then he stood and stared at the huge oak tree in the front yard. The tree was he so rotten inside, it looked as though the next storm would knock it down. Birds had built their nests in its hollow. Then Pa looked up at the roof. He said, that roof is ready to cave coronas in. But I knew that Grandma wouldn't let Pa or my uncles fix the roof. She wouldn't let them remove an old board and put a new one on. She said it was her roof and she was satisfied with it the way it was. As we entered the house, Pa smiled and said, Hello, Mother. I thought I'd come by to see how you're feeling. I feel all right, Nick, she said. Grandma looked at me and asked, How are you, Shen? I'm fine, I said. Your gate needs to be fixed, Mother, said Pa. It's about ready to fall down. That gate is all right, Grandma said. Nephew Herbert fixed that gate for me. He fixed it just the way I wanted it. But what about that big oak tree in the front yard? Pa asked her. Any windstorm is liable to push that tree over onto the house. I've got birds that have built nests in that oak for 25 years, Grandma said. I don't want to have it cut down. Let it fall on the house if it doesn't find some other place to fall. Pa didn't say anything. Finally, Grandma said, if you all are afraid that I am going to be found dead in this house some morning, I don't mind going to your house, and I'll try staying there for a while. I'll still be able to see my house. I've only lived away from this house for three days in my whole life but going to your house may work out. I'll try it. So, Grandma came to stay with us. Pa took some of her furniture and put it in the room that Mom had set aside for her. Grandma would sit all day and look through the window at her house, but she really couldn't see it very well because one of our apple trees was in the way. After a week went by, Grandma became very homesick. When I was sitting in the room with her, she suddenly told me that she wanted me to cut down the apple tree in our orchard so that she could see her house better. I told Mom about it and she told me not to do it. I know your pa doesn't want it cut. I don't want it cut either. Our apple orchard was only eight years old, and the trees had been very carefully trimmed. I knew that our orchard was the prettiest thing on our farm and that it was very valuable to us because it was our main source of income. I wanted to see grandma get what she wanted, but I knew how hard mom and pa had worked on the orchard. I remembered how they set fires near the orchard to make smoke so the frost wouldn't kill the fruit that was still in the blossom. Pa came home at noon. After he had fed his team of horses, he came into the house. Mom told him that Grandma wanted us to cut the apple tree so that she would be able to see her house. I can't cut one of my flowering fruit trees, Pa said. I just can't do that. Pa didn't think about the tree until two days later when he went to work in the orchard. He stopped, threw up his hands, and ran back to the house. What's the matter, Mick? Mom asked. Who cut the apple tree? No one, Mom said. Has it been cut? See for yourself, he told Mom. When Mom went with him to look at the tree, I went to Grandma's room and saw her looking out of the window at her old house. Grandma sat peacefully by the window as if nothing had happened. I saw Mom and Pa standing by the tree. Pa was carefully examining it. I went out to see if the tree had been pulled out by a windstorm. And it had. It had been uprooted by a windstorm that had swept around the corner of our orchard and had hit the tree that Grandma had wanted to cut down. Not a branch on any of the other trees had been damaged. I don't understand this, Pa said. I think we better take mother back to her own home. I don't know what might happen here next if we don't. Grandma was sitting by the window when Pa and Mom asked her if she wanted to move back. I never really wanted to move here in the first place, Grandma said. Yes, take me back. I was glad when Pa and Mom moved Grandma and her furniture back to her old house. I was glad because then my sister Mary and I could visit her there. In the spring and summer, we went to see Grandma. Then autumn came and the leaves started to fall. 
They fell into the drain pipes and clogged them, so I climbed on top of the house and pulled the clumps of leaves out of the drain pipes. Once, when I stepped on the roof, my foot broke through, but I never lost my balance or felt that I was in any peril. I had the best times I ever had in my life when I visited Grandma. I enjoyed the freedom that she gave me, but it made me sad when she said that she would never leave her house again that she had left it once and that was enough. It hurt me to hear her say that she would die in this house. One hot September night thunder shook the earth and streaks of lightning cut through the dark sky. It was a terrible night and fierce gusts of wind came. Grandma told Mary and me to leave the house. She said that she would follow us. We didn't want to go first, but she told us to and we did as we were told. We hadn't gotten beyond the sidewalk when all at once we heard a mighty crash. Little pieces of oak twigs hit us. We ran out into the yard out into the thick darkness, screaming for Grandma. But she didn't come. The heavy oak tree had fallen onto the decaying house and had crashed through it. When the lightning flashed, we could see that parts of the house were still standing, but the doorway that we had come through had collapsed. Let's hurry and tell Mom and Pa, Mary said. We followed the path toward home by the lightning flashes, and on the way we met Mom and Pa coming in raincoats and carrying lanterns. The old oak tree fell on the house. Mary screamed, Grandma, can't get out. When we got to the house, Pa made his way through the pieces of broken shingles and wood and went to the place where Mary told him Grandma was when the crash came, and they found Grandma pinned to the floor underneath a beam. She was dead. She had died where she wanted to die and maybe the way she had wanted to die. She had died in her own house. The old rotting oak that Pa had often told her was dangerous and had wanted to cut for her had killed Grandma. And out into the mighty, storm out into the wind, darkness, and rain her birds flew from the hollow of the oak. They were singing a mournful song for her.